Hey everybody, welcome back. Another more about review here. Uh, we are on Rialto's, the console game. This is Gold 5. Player says, uh, didn't feel like I started the game well. I was trying to find good angles to pressure the enemy team to allow my team to push up, but I think I got a little overextended, not adding much value. Uh, after the start, I feel like I did a pretty good job of keeping the team alive, doing damage, applying pressure on the opposing team. I'm not completely new to Overwatch, as I played Overwatch 1 in its early days, but I've not played it a very long time, close to seven or eight years, recently picked it up. I've had a blast with Moira and trying to figure out how to climb and be as effective as I can be. Yeah, so I've, I've played Overwatch since it came out, and um, I didn't really have a home until Moira came out. Um, I played it. I played Team Fortress 2 pretty religiously since it came out in 2007, um, and so I played uh, a lot of Demo Man. So when Overwatch 2 came out, I was like, oh, Junkrat. Well, they're actually really not the same at all, so they don't play the same at all. So... Um, it, it, so I struggled with that, and I tried a bunch of different ones, and anyway, Moira came out and found my home. All right. Because I didn't play competitive until, like, right right before she came out. It was, like, season 17 or something like that. So uh, what I like to do, and I actually like that your Cassidy did this, is on this map, depending on what they have, right? If they don't have anybody that can push me really fast, and they don't, uh, the soldier might, but he's not going to because he's not going to come all the way down here. Uh, is I will go this direction, and this is this is the angle that you set up because you shoot damage orbs at them, and then it allows your team to kind of move up using cover. Okay, because your diva should be doing this, flying up, taking the high ground, and then I want to see you moving over here. And it looks like you did, uh, but it looks like we probably uh, opened ourselves up to damage a little bit too much. Let's see. So, it's weird you're like, the freaking things are moving. All right, yeah, we got, we got a little greedy there because we got a little tunnel visioned on the turret. Uh, Torb turrets are not your problem. Uh, since you can only damage them with your damage beam, uh, that means you have to be within shooting range of them, which means you are also opening yourself up from damage from other players, and Moira just can't take that much damage. I don't like this. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the big flank here. Because we're just going to get pushed and die. So, M Moira can flank. It's just not as much as she used to be able to. And a flank like that is very hard because there's not really very many places for you to escape to where they can't just get to you. Okay? Especially when they have somebody like a soldier who can just run. Um... We're a little too far forward here. Yeah, these really aggressive fades. I I can get behind them, but we need to we need to be better about doing it into cover because we faded into the open and then we ended up using cover, which is good. Uh, but this is dangerous. It's also dangerous because uh, like this, the Arissa was kind of tunnel visioned. Um, she could have. There's a bomb on the. Uh, there's a junk wrap mine. Um, on the cart. Okay, it's gone now. Because if I were him, I would wait till I spawned, and then I would have detonated it. It's like, you know, that's free damage for him if, if he gets it. So this was a good opportunity to use our coalescence. Right now. Okay, we shoot an orb, and we we shoot an orb at the enemy team, or shoot it, like, right against this, this wall here, so it bounces that way. And then... What you want to do is a couple of things. One, they're all standing out in the open, so they can take a lot of damage. And you can use this cover so you don't get spiked down. And then two, that means they're all going to look at you. And that now they're not looking at your team. So it gives your teammates the opportunity to do damage to them, right? Um, looks like not very many people are here. But your Sigma... I, I still would have done it. Uh, but your Sigma would be able to push up a lot easier, especially now that he doesn't have his, he just uses kinetic grasp. Um, his shield's probably dead by now too. Let's see if he's even used it yet. Uh, where are you? Yeah, is well, no, he has a shield. Okay. Yeah, it died, right? So he's, he's waiting for his shield to come back, right? Cause that's what I'm saying. That, that's a pretty, that's a pretty common Sigma cycle is they'll put their shield out until it breaks, then use their kinetic grasp and then throw the rock in somewhere. Right, um, mo most sigmas suck at, at cycling their cooldowns. So, had we used our ultimate there, it would have gotten their team to back up, 
or at the very least look at you and allows your Sigma to get in a much better position or just kind of recompose himself and then stay in the fight. Okay, so it ended up working out, but we could have done that a lot sooner and with is with less uh, risk to the enemy team getting getting some pressure on us. So, I know she's low, but that's low in Arisa terms. That is not low in uh, just actual player terms. Okay, and I, I just said this in the the review that posted before yours did. Um, don't damage if you have the choice. Damage the person who is doing the healing. Okay, so I want to put the pressure on her because her healing spray is more than your damage, right? So. Your damage is, is bullshit, basically, right? I'm going to shoot a damage orb here. I'm going to put the pressure on them, okay? I'm also going to do it from a little bit more cover. We're definitely just standing out in the open. You can get speared off the map here. You can get... Uh, the soldier can just put a lot of pressure on you, which is what he should be doing, right? Because remember, as I just said, put the pressure where the healing is. So if I was a soldier, I'd be shooting your ass and get you out of the fight, okay? Just like you need to be doing to them. Oops. Um... Okay, look at that. Somebody put the pressure on the Moira. She lost health. She faded to get out of the fight. And then the Orisa stopped getting healed and she died, right? So that's exactly what I'm talking about. But you need to be the person that initiates that. Don't rely on somebody else to do it. So here, I want to take high ground as much as possible, especially if somebody on my team is doing it. Um, and here's a minor little thing. Ventures, especially low rank ventures, are not going to just pop out of the ground and go after you. They're going to charge up their, you know, friggin' mole burst or whatever the hell it's called. Uh, wait until they're right until right before they're going to pop out of the ground. So you got to learn the cooldown a little bit and then use your fade uh, and then you won't take any damage from it. Uh, what I was going to say, though, or continue saying, is take the high ground there. You want to get, you want to get your, t especially if you have a teammate up there, because the two of you can hold this. Because these stairs are a very powerful position on this part of the map. So I want to control these, right? You'll notice in high rank games, there's basically always somebody here, right? And, and this this high ground gets fought over a lot, okay? Because it's it's just such a powerful position, right? Because the soldier, he's basically shooting into your team for free. Absolutely for free. And it makes it really hard to get around this corner. Right. Okay, so we know the Moira doesn't have Fade, and we saw her come out of Fade over here. We need to keep the pressure on her. Okay, and then we tunnel visioned a little bit and, and didn't realize. And then we're, we're out in the open, right? So having that high ground up there would have been instrumental into kind of preventing that. Um... Especially since when I was first talking about it, you had players on the high ground, and they probably got forced out because they weren't getting healed. Okay, so our tank just died. He's not coming back for 10 seconds, right? At least, right? For, for how long it takes to, like, respawn and come back and all that shit. Okay. So I... I'm not engaging here quite yet. If they are pushed up this far, I'm not I'm not coming over this far. Unless I can get over to the bridge and, and fade over to here where they don't see me. Um, you have to be careful about that. Because a, a higher ranked team is going to be a little bit more coordinated. I was going to say, I bet this Orisa has ultimate because I, I hadn't even looked yet. right? Uh, I just talked about that recently too. How it's really obvious when tanks want to use their ult. The only reason she didn't use it right there is because she got spiked down faster than she expected. All right, let's go back I accidentally clicked off of you. I'm fine with this. Keep the pressure on them. Get them to move back. Hopefully get your tank to move up. Get some, get some uh, cooldowns out. Ooh. Homeboy fucked up the beat. <laughs> Good fade there. 
I, I want to keep my distance as much as possible, right? I, try to use your distance, your uh, the range of your your damage beam as much as possible. Same thing with coalescence, right? I don't I don't know if you've been doing that, but that's that's just. Um, something it's a good practice i like this angle this is a really really strong angle right because they none of them want to be looking that way okay we faded and then not to cover so we we got, got killed by the the ultimate i'm he must have just fell out of the window there's no way he ran all the way around right Oh, yeah, okay. So he jumped out of you. I was like, because I knew he was up there. I was like, how do you get behind you all of a sudden? He didn't need to do that. He could have just stayed there. Oh, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, we, we faded outside of here, right? Uh, the only time I want to see you like fade to the point like that is if it's going to trigger overtime, but that was, it, we weren't even close to that yet. So, okay. Not far enough. Uh, okay. So on this, so far our our positioning and the angles that we're taking have either been way too aggressive. Um, so I, I like that you're taking the angles, you're you're finding them. They've either been way too aggressive, or we just haven't taken them at all. Okay. So. Uh, like where we should have taken that high ground there because you can always drop off of the high ground right that's that's the thing about high ground if you go up there and absolutely nobody else is with you and the enemy team is pushing you out of there okay fine don't force the issue all right make them fight for it but don't force the issue don't don't kill yourself doing it um but we need to at least try it this is very dangerous i don't like where we are we're out in the middle of literally everything uh and, and this is this is an easy way to get killed Because everything you're doing, you can do from cover. You do it right here. You can heal. You can shoot damage orbs, right? Your damage beam isn't that big of a deal because it doesn't do much that much damage anyway. And if they do enter your damage beam space, you can still damage them, right? The damage beam goes far enough. It'll go all the way across the bridge. So anybody, if you're right here and somebody pops out from behind the payload, easy damage, okay? But I, I need you under... I need you... I need you behind cover. All right, so we, we got our fade forced out. Okay. And now we're standing out in the open again. Okay. So our, our positioning hasn't been getting punished as much as it should be here, and it probably gets punished in other games way more than this. Yeah, we're way too far ahead. I, I, no reason for us to be here. Even when you have the advantage, because you're so close to their spawn, all they have to do is just you not pay attention to them switching to Widow or something, and then they just come out, take your head off, and now you're two miles away, right? Back in your spawn. Okay, so you have to be exceptionally careful around around the enemy spawns, um, especially when they have the spawn advantage. And then we paid for it. Okay. He, he killed us so fast, we didn't even... Didn't even react fast enough for fade, right? And so that's uh, that basically exactly what I'm talking about. So, big picture, I want to see way more cover usage. And when you're u taking those angles, I ensure the angle is um, set up in such a way that you can get out if you need to. Right, so like on attack, when you went all the way over here, you had nowhere to go, right, where they couldn't just chase you. So you need to ensure you're setting up that angle. So I, I like that you're looking for the angles. That's really good. Um, but our, our standing out in the open, uh, we take way too much damage. We get killed for it. Okay. Uh, I, I, I bet we get punished for it more in other matches than we did in this one. Um, I didn't see a reason for this ultimate, so yeah, we just waste our ultimate. That was even worse. That was a terrible. 
Yeah, so we, we waste our ultimate there, and then because we were so far out of position, by the time we got back, and then we're still out of position, we get punished and died, right? I, everything that happened there was totally our fault. Because I would have even been fine with us using our ultimate during the Katsune rush. Uh, because she was stupid enough to use it there. Because they ended up flipping the fight, but you I mean, you weren't even there uh, when they when they first used it. So if you would have if you would have been positioned correctly, you, you probably could have helped out a lot with that and, and not even needed to use your ult. Okay. So once again we're we're standing out completely out in the open. There's no reason for us to ever be here. Okay. So we definitely have to play a few games where we work on that. Uh, using cover at all times. There's no reason for you to be on the objective. And I've said this before, you know, I'm not saying this is you, but, but gold players are like the experts at playing Overwatch the way the game kind of intends you to play it. Uh, but that's average, right? You don't want to be average. So as, as the support, no reason for you to be on the payload. Never heard that voice line before. Right, see we got our Fade forced out because we're standing out in the open. And then because we got our Fade forced out, we couldn't um, we couldn't help anybody. Not to say that we were going to help anybody, but we couldn't either, right? Okay, looks like this is about it. Uh, yeah, 100%, I, I would say our positioning is getting us punished the most. Um, again, I like that you're taking those angles. Okay, so let's work on, if you're going to take a very aggressive angle, you need to have an out. You need to have an out anyway, right? But if you take a very aggressive angle, you need to have an out, okay? And then, if you're taking an angle, you need to um, use cover and ensure you don't don't get too far out, right? And, and that that's the common theme of basically everything here is, is that we... We weren't using cover, uh, and I'd also like to see you using high ground, high ground a lot more. Like I don't even think we used it at all, um, the entire match. Okay, so high ground positioning, and then right, we gotta we gotta watch our coalescence usage, make sure we're not using it for a reason. It could have been a mistake. I mean, I've cast coalescence by accident by hitting the key, right? So I mean, there's always that, but uh, make sure when we're casting, we're doing it for a reason. So, okay, well, good stuff. That'll about do it for this one. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and good luck.